Now, I know that you have this D-O-N-E formula, done formula. How do you use that to help your clients and your community? Yes. So the done formula, and it is an acronym. It's an acronym, just like it sounds, done, D-O-N-E. And what it allows you to do is, one, redefine success for yourself right? Redefine success for your vision. Because a lot of what we thought success was, particularly those of us who are going into entrepreneurship after traditional employment or during traditional employment, we have to redefine it because what served us then doesn't necessarily serve us the same way Mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur. And so it allows you to redefine success. And it also leads you into the understanding and the absolute belief that do it yourself doesn't mean do it alone. And so here's the acronym. The D is twofold. We talked about defining, right? Mm -hmm. You absolutely can, but good luck. And really activating your how if you haven't yet defined what it is Mm -hmm. that you're doing, right? So what do you want to do? Those five W's. Who are you doing it for, right? So it needs to benefit someone else, not just you. Why are you doing it? Where will you show up? Because your customers are everywhere, but not everyone is your customer. And when are you going to make it happen? Right? People use the word project loosely. You know, us project managers, whether we're certified or we're doing it by nature of being practitioners, it makes our skin crawl when you don't have a deadline because then it's not a project. A project must have a defined start and a defined end. So everything you do, that's the intentionality behind it, right? You're, you're deciding, which moves into the other half of the D, is to decide. It's not ideas that we execute, it's decisions. Because the idea without action is what, folks? Put it in the comments. <laughs> a wish, right? Yeah. It's, a, it's simply a wish. But once you decide, I'm going to take the next step, and the next step is, and it doesn't have to be grandiose. Mm-hmm. It can be... I'm going to make a post about this idea or about this meetup or about this conversation. I'm going to call, pick up the phone, right? I'm going to purchase this tool that I need, I, this software, this, I'm going to sign up for a free trial, right? Whatever the case may be, once you make that decision, stuff starts happening. You start moving, right? Mm-hmm. Then the O, with your decisions, you own them. You own them. You say to yourself, now, what do I need to do? What adjustments do I need to make in my day-to-day life so that I can show up to this idea, so that I can follow through with this decision, this commitment, so that I can have the people around me support it? Mm -hmm. Do it yourself doesn't mean do it alone, right? Who can help? Does this mean that I sign up for a meal delivery service so that my family can be fed because the hour and a half I was spending cooking dinner, now I can have it delivered that buys me back at least an hour and then we can sit down and eat dinner together, (laughs) right? Instead of you throwing the meal on and getting them fed and you skipping dinner because you got to go back and hop on the computer, right? Like, what do I need? Does companion now cook? Does eldest son or daughter now do the laundry? Like, does mom or, 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 or neighbor or whatever your community looks like, let them bless you. They want to be with you on this journey. Allow them to show up in the ways that they need and understand, remember, your customers are everywhere, but not everyone is your customer. So just because they're family doesn't mean they're going to buy into your service, but they can buy into your morality. They can mm-hmm. buy into the moral support that is just as necessary as the financial means for you to succeed. Amazing. Right? Just the in, right? The in, nurture, nurture your dream, nurture making it a reality, right? It's like a plant. When you water it, right? Or a garden, when you water it, what happens? It blooms. A baby, when it's birthed, you nurture it into adulthood, right? You nurture the child. Mm-hmm. Think of your business, your dream as something that you have to nurture. Again, you decided it. Now you have to own it. Now, what do I need and who do I need so that it can flourish and thrive? Do I need to outsource something? 
Do I need to schedule something? Do I need to invite someone in because they have that area of expertise? Don't spend a whole lot of time strengthening your weaknesses. Allow other people to operate in their zone of genius and collaborate with you, Mm -hmm. right? So nurture that idea. And then the E is executed. Now that you've identified, right, you've defined it, you've decided where you're going to start, you're owning it because you're making the adjustments and you're inviting people in, you're nurturing it because you're looking at now, you've got a plan of action, you've got a strategy that you've put to it, you're seeing how you can make it happen. Now you're going to be intentional and you're going to execute it and you're going to back all of this stuff up to a calendar so that it actually happens and so that you can manage reasonable expectations so that the people you have invited to this vision, they know exactly what when and where and how to show up for you, right? Everybody is transparent. Everybody is accountable. Balls aren't being dropped because we've given people assignments that fit them, right? You're not trying to do all the things yourself. And you're getting it done, folks. You're getting it done. Yeah. And that is project management in like the simplest form possible. D-O-N-E. Done. That's so fantastic. So fantastic. And I love how you're like, no, others want to be part of the dream, the journey. They may not understand it. They may not be your clients, but they understand you. They're invested in you and they want to see you do well. Mm -hmm. And that's the role that they want to play. And I think that's beautiful because sometimes we might feel like we're being a burden Mm -hmm. to others, or we might feel like we're just giving more stuff on their plate and they already have a full plate. But then again, we wouldn't know unless we ask. We don't know unless we ask. I said, what's the worst somebody can say? No, big deal. No is also an acronym. Next opportunity. If they can't or don't want to show up to it, there's another person. There's more than one way. Like for me, like whether it's social media, whether it's a conversation, whether it's whatever it is, it's an invitation, not an obligation. Okay, first of all, First of all, can we talk about how <laughs> no is an acronym for next opportunity? Absolutely. I literally have my, my Sharpie <laughs> and my Post-it and it's yes. literally going on my board as we speak. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's normalize no as an acronym for next opportunity, okay? When you hear for no, yes. don't take it personally. Don't look at it as though you're not worthy. You have a no in you too right? And you say no to things for reasons that make sense to you. So when other people say no, it's not about you. It's about them. It doesn't make sense for them. And no doesn't mean no forever. It just means no right now. Keep it moving. I think like sometimes when clients or, you know, things happen and people take it very personally, but that's when the issues happen also. And then when you take things too personally, that's when sometimes your business also goes into this black hole of negativity mm-hmm. Yep, and really have to just kind of be a little bit more like sitting back and seeing it as a third party at times also. That's right. Be more data driven. So leaders, no matter what size your business is, leaders, when you think about good leaders, leadership, they make data driven decisions, mm. right? Now I'm not saying don't humanize business. Do do humanize business, but let the data drive your decisions. And feedback is both quantitative as well as qualitative, Mm -hmm. right? They're not isolated. So when things happen and you get in your feelings, go ahead and give yourself a chance to feel. Don't make any hard decisions though. Yeah. After you feel and until you have pulled the data that will guide you in the most appropriate direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. That will help you so much and it will help you recognize that it's not personal and even if it is personal you can look at the data to say well the character of a person is not so much when things are great but when they are not going favorably (laughs) right doctor of this paraphrasing uh you know quote by dr martin luther king and so if the ugly shows up when things aren't going well believe it Right? It's easy for us to show up and, and be all, you know, happy go lucky when things are, are going favorably. There's no resistance. But the yeah. true strength and character of a person shows up when things aren't going well. Yeah. That's data. Believe it and make your decision. Yeah. yeah. Right? yeah. That's great advice. And so kind of I know you have the done method, which is so brilliant. Uh-huh. 
and that's you know you use that with your clients and you talk about that but what about that one person or other members of the community that before they even get to the done method they're just mm-hmm. kind of stuck they're stuck in the negativity mm-hmm. how do you help them or the pessimism and how do you help them come out of that is there any kind of you know advice that you could give on that so I like to remind people that the personal, especially in, you know, early entrepreneurship or in what I like to call the micro business level of small business, right, where it might be you and one or a few other people, right? You're not so far into being a company or corporate that you're removed from your personal why, right? I really like to let the person know we have to address you. Right. So my clients, one of the first things we talk about before we start setting these amazingly outrageous goals, let's talk about you. And remember, I can only work with what you invite me to. So what's going on with you? Why do you feel stuck? What happened? When did you make the decision that you can't? Mm -hmm. Who told you you can't? Who is that voice? What is that voice? Why did it show up? Let's address that. So that we can manage reasonable expectations. Because while by nature of being a professional, you may be ambitious and you may want to conquer eight things this week, but your dog is sick. Your mom needs to have surgery. You know, your toddler is, I don't know, teething. But this week, because life, we're going to focus on three things that you can accomplish because we have to factor in your very real reality. Mm -hmm. Because if your mind isn't on par, I don't care how many strategies I give you. If you don't believe you can tackle them, you won't. Mm-hmm. And we'll be sitting in the same place, same time next week, mm-hmm. having the same conversation. And it's going to be a problem for you. And it's going to be a problem for me. Because now we each aren't getting where we want to be going. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. let's start with addressing the reality, the very real parts of who you are. So that we can now move that and incorporate that into what it is that you aspire to be doing. Okay. You, you can't have one without the other. Yeah. Because yeah. If you're crashing as a person, eventually your camouflage as a professional will come tumbling down. Yeah. Or yeah. If you are soaring as a person, but professionally you're miserable, your person eventually is going to be affected. Yeah. So, And we've seen that right? with some really big you know, online business owners and people who are in the limelight of that when that's not aligned, Mm -hmm. eventually the veils are all uncovered, you know, all uncovered and such power packed information. So many gems of wisdom, so many gems of encouragement and, you know, just perceptions and perspectives. And I know Mm -hmm. that others who are listening will be just as beautifully impacted as I have been today. You know, I usually ask my, I love books. I love reading. And then I have like this pile of books sitting next to my bed. So what is your favorite book or books that you'd like to share with us? Oh, okay. So book, the number one that comes to mind is like the five dysfunctions of a team because people think that conflict, Mm -hmm. right? The conflict is bad. Mm -hmm. And well, as a project manager, as a project consultant, I'm like, give me the one person that everybody runs from because they feel like they're so negative and they're so disgruntled. When I see that person, I see a person who's frustrated because they haven't been heard. I see a person that has something to say. They know they've already identified another way, but they've been pushed aside because of groupthink and people want to do things the way they've always been done because change doesn't feel good. Mm. And I'm like, give me that person. That person is going to become your greatest advocate as soon as they are heard. And they're going to become one of the most positive people that are going to impact other people to see this other way Mm -hmm. and how to amplify the goodness in the the team that exists. Right. And having transparent conversation, conflict Mm -hmm. is not always awful. Mm. Conflict helps you think and find alternative options for the reality that you actually are intended to be going, you know, the direction that you intend to be going in. Mm-hmm. So the five dysfunctions of a team is the one that comes to mind. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean, Tawana, you are, 
seriously very gifted. Thank you so much. Thank you, Teresa. <laughs> Thank you.